Well, the big news coming out of Washington this week is the imminent departure of the man they call Bush's brain, Karl Rove. Turd Blossom, as Commander Guy affectionately calls him, has had quite an impact on Washington. Bush ended up calling him the architect because of the impact that he's had on national politics. And that's what we're going to talk about this week. Now, there's been a ton of media coverage, as you might imagine, rightfully so. This man is, uh, has transformed American politics. You know, in all the media coverage, I think a big aspect has been missing. Mostly what people have been saying, the pundits, whether it's mainstream media, progressive blogs, conservative blogs, whoever, they've all had pretty much the same line, that ultimately Rove failed. He um, had articulated a dream of having a permanent Republican majority, and the pundits are rightfully pointing out that he's failed. The Republicans are in pretty bad shape right now. Bush's ratings are in the tank, and uh, Rove leaves town without the permanent Republican majority that, that was his dream. But here's the thing that I think a lot of the uh, media outlets and the pundits are really missing. What does it mean to have a permanent Republican majority? What does that really mean? A permanent Republican majority can be taken to mean one party rule, a one party state. And that's pretty antithetical to our system of government. Now, Rove wasn't going to try to outlaw the Democratic Party, but he used all the apparatus of the federal government to make sure that the Republicans would rule forever. The Democrats could run candidates, they could have a permanent minority in the Congress, but they couldn't really affect policy. That's what Rove's plan was. That approaches totalitarianism, one party rule. One-party states are routinely condemned by politicians in this country, aren't they? I think Henry Waxman pretty much hit it on the head when he said that what Rove was after was to make the federal government a wholly owned subsidiary of the Republican Party. We've already seen some of the effects of having a one-party state. Take what came to be known as the K Street Project. This basically is where corporate lobbyists in exchange for huge cash contributions to the Republican Party, the one-party rulers. In exchange for these large cash contributions, the corporate lobbyists got to write the legislation. Forget it, we don't need congressmen anymore. Just bring in the corporate lobbyists. They'll write the legislation for the very agencies that are supposed to be regulating their corporations. You know, it was Mussolini, the father of fascism, who defined fascism as the merging of corporate power and state power. That's one of the things that we're looking at with one party rule, this one party state, Rove's dream. Here's another aspect of one party rule. It's subverting the entire government, the government that's supposed to be doing the work of the people, our work, on our behalf and our benefit. Instead of working for the people, the government ends up working for the party. Karl Rove held over 100 political briefings for various cabinet departments. Over 100. They're not supposed to hold any political briefings. Everybody we know, is, you know has their political affiliations, has their political feelings, but when you work for the government, when you work for the people, you're supposed to check that at the door and do the people's work when you report to the office. Not under a Karl Rove administration. Maybe one of the worst examples of using government apparatus on behalf of a party can be seen in the U.S. attorney scandal. What's coming out as the, the investigations go forward is that a lot of U.S. attorneys were fired for not pursuing bogus indictments against Democratic candidates for office. We don't have elections anymore. We have power plays on the part of the government dominated by one party. Here's the final enduring danger about Rove's dream. Yeah, the current situation means that Rove didn't accomplish his dream. The Republicans are in trouble right now. We all know that. But let's remember the 2006 elections that supposedly swept the Republicans out and brought the Democrats in were actually very, very close. Rove almost pulled it off yet again. The government has been transformed, and a lot of people remain in Washington that still believe in Karl Rove's dream. They're still employed by the federal government. 
They're still there working against us, the people of the United States. We've lost our government. We have to pay attention. I wish the media had paid attention a little bit more. I'm Paul George, here to tell you Orwell was an optimist.